Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makoto Man at YouTube with another modeling video. Today I'm building the Aoshima Amatsu Kazu. I think that's uh, the proper pronunciation. 1700 scale. This is the normal boxing. Mind you, it's more or less exactly what's inside all these uh, fancy special two to three times more expensive Kantai collection. Uh, boxings. Uh, normally it's just one of these boxings you saw in the first image uh, slid over with a fancy uh, sleeve and some decals and other uh, interesting pictures. Mind you I've also fallen for the same trap and bought some of them myself though cracking out something that's a bit cheaper and building it gives you guys an idea of uh, what you're falling into and Aoshima is not renowned for being the highest quality or the nicest styling kits out there outside of cars and some of their ships and military subjects can be a bit uh, on the poor side. Even though this subject matter has been very uh, famous and very well known through the anime Kantai collection, mind you these kits were out many years before that and feature actual World War II warships which would look um, or source material exactly like this. Uh, the concept of these girls and whatnot feature in these kits not so ever, they're just not there, only box art. Best modeling marketing ploy of our time. All that uh, griping aside, we are given three runners with uh, a metallic uh, plate that slides in and an extra uh, runner in a plastic bag that's uh, just additional aircraft and torpedoes and stuff that makes uh, every Imperial Japanese destroyer slightly uh, different if they've got more or less... Um, life rafts or whatnot depending on what stage of the war or exact subclass they belong to. We're also given a very handy set of decals and somewhat uh, clear-ish instructions. Now mind you this would have been very challenging and a poor experience if I had a um, limited uh, modeling skill set and tools. I did consider this kit as a test bed for many different things, the reason why the build extended over more than a year. The uh, building and gluing utilized uh, really fine nippers such as the God Hands and uh, Ryan Pla Ultimate Nippers. Cutting really tiny fine parts uh, with those was an absolute treat over uh, standard nippers which would cause all sorts of uh, havoc and instant gluing him in with the uh, cement uh, accelerant or extra thin uh, quick type that uh, just bonded things together and fitting and none of that was an issue uh, whatsoever. But the assembly process, detailing, fitting and assembly does definitely uh, show its age and uh, an experience with a Tamiya kit or a newer uh, manufacturer or model would be a far more pleasing uh, experience as well as finish. Yet still following the use of extra thin quick type and super fine premium nippers would make the experience excellent, especially if you're regular to all sorts of scales of uh, ships. Mind you, it was worth the experimentation. The kit was primed in Tamiya Grey surface primer via airbrush. And with the separation of the upper and lower hull airbrushed in the appropriate uh, naval greys and uh, other colours, with uh, smaller details uh, hand painted with uh, a very fine triple quadruple uh, sized paintbrush, all in lacquers again. Due to scale, light shading was highly inappropriate, and the two halves were super glued together once hardened. Colouring and painting came out very, very nicely. Very happy how that all turned out. And I used the Imperial Japan um, decal, not so much the actual paper flag. Uh, wetted it and folded it in half around one of the masts to get the flag effect. It was uh, very, very thin, very, very fragile, can break off at any second, but uh, looks quite good and convinced me nicely. There was a small fold, but I assume it's sort of like as it's flapping in the wind. Now, doing further experimentation, I applied uh, the SMS uh, black oil wash 
and in a number of hours layer, later, way too soon, uh, the clear mats. Uh, this was an error totally on my behalf. The uh, wash did a good job, picked up details. I did it extra thin, so I just recessed in the right areas. Putting on the um, clear way too soon and in too many uh, passes uh, built up in the wet areas of the wash and turned uh, white. Uh, there should definitely be many hours to a day separation as uh, oils just dry way too slow and it just left a slightly messed up, not ideal uh, finish. This was totally uh, my fault on um, this project, though she was a test bed for many methods and I did drag plenty of videos out of this build. So in these two final pictures, you can see in one or two corners a very slight amount of uh, white buildup. Now mind you, this is my very first ship. Uh, normally with things that are way out of your water, uh, you do make some very amateurish mistakes. And it probably didn't help with uh, doing all those experiments. Mind you, how everything else went before the very end. And um, probably uh, the crookedness of uh, one of the masks. I'm very happy. I'll build more ships. I'll probably build my Kantai ships. It uh, did take a long time to pump this out. Future ones will be a lot quicker. It took me a very long time to release this video because of um, not being pleased how the final model looks, but it's something I just have to come to grips with and share the experience with uh, everyone else. And I think I need to get back to uh, making a few more ships because it's a lot of fun. And hey, Can't I Collie is a really cool show and uh, just want to get that sort of stuff uh, out there and have fun. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. Uh, check out the usual links down below, and catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching it. Uh, bear with the mistakes I definitely did make with this uh, model. I will uh, definitely not be uh, repeating them again, and um, we'll see what the uh, future holds.